Well, this is exciting. Uh, Friella Gans Kickstarter fulfillment is coming thick and fast after uh, quite a long wait for Forbidden Lands. This week we've got the Coriolis campaign, or the first part of the Coriolis campaign, Emissary Lost. And now I'm going to open it and we'll see what's inside. And the first thing we have are some lovely new Coriolis custom dice. We didn't get these in the first um, Kickstarter for Coriolis and um, I always felt we were missing some lovely custom dice. Um, so here they are. Um, well, shall we get them out? Here they are, let's get a close up of these. Remember, in Coriolis it's very simple. There's nothing to worry about if you roll a one because you've spent darkness points on, uh, on this. Uh, we're only interested in sixes, which are successes. And here we have the scarab, which makes quite an important part of the Coriolis iconography. That marks a six. Um, we'll see how these go in play. Uh, the box comes with 10 of those dice, which in Coriolis should be enough. What else do we have? Nothing we need to worry about from there. We have some bubble wrap. Obviously, that's an exciting thing. And in here, let's get that box out of the way. We've got. Last Voyage of the Gazani. This is a sort of prequel adventure for the Emissary Emiss Lost campaign. Um, I believe it has some spoilers in it, so I'm not going to show, um, show you necessarily the front page, because if I recall correctly from the PDF, there's some pretty big spoilers on the front page. Um, now, this is a campaign originally written for, or rather, uh, this scenario in particular is originally written for the first version of Coriolis. Um, so you can see it's by Matthias uh, Lydia, who um, uh, became Simbaroon and is now back with Free League, but uh, as part of the Team Simbaroon side of Free League. And uh, this is Ricard and Troya, who wrote, or finally finished writing, shall we say, the main campaign. So he's involved there. Um, there are some lovely uh, deck plans and things. What else do we need to show you? Um, lovely, lovely looks of the ship. Uh, all nicely done. Stapled and 64 pages. So there we go. The next one we have is our um, secret. So this is an interesting one. Um, Kickstarter um, backers of the first campaign have had about half of this already. They've had the kind of location. And this actually offers a whole scenario and it's in print, which is lovely. Um, I think there was a, an option to add on a bunch of the other scenarios in print, which I declined to take. Um, generally happy with PDFs uh, for adventures. Uh, they kind of use once things, so I'm less worried about having them in print. And I'm quite happy with uh, using them on my PDF. I can scribble on them on my tablet. Uh, yeah, I quite like Alan's Review as a setting there, and I did plan to have an adventure there at some point. So I think there will be an adventure there uh, now. Then, before we get on to the main book, we've got the map of Kuma, which is not massive. 
broadly equivalent to four pages. Um, and that's upside down. Broadly equivalent to uh, four pages. All those names being very different to me now, but I wonder whether I'll find out more about them as I read through the campaign. And on the reverse, we've got uh, the monolith and uh, the surroundings of the monolith. And we've got a very spaceport, uh, which I've already used. Not this pad, I used it on BGF. And finally, we've got the main deal. So this is a lovely book. I love this artwork. I want this artwork on on everything. I almost went for the, um, the biggest uh, Kickstarter tier, which got a limited edition print of this artwork signed by Martin Grip, who was the artist. But then I thought better of it. I thought that's a lot of money to spend before Christmas. And my wife might have killed me. Um, so there's some things I want to show you in this book. Um, in particular though, if we cut to the credits page. There we go. And as we can see here, uh, Ricard Antoya is mentioned as the first writer. But let's just zoom in down here and zoom in and zoom in and there's my name and of course the name of my co-host on the Coriolis Effect podcast Dave C. Mark. It's nice to be credited but what's interesting is we weren't playtesters so how come we're here? I have a very good idea about that and now I'm going to show it to you. Give me a moment. If we cut to page 128 which is here, we can read about the Hammam Tamina. Now, uh, regular listeners to the Coriolis Effect or visitors to my blog at fictionsuit.org may have read about Samar's Hammam, which uh, was one of the first posts, that were one of the first things we shared uh, when we started the Coriolis Effect. Um, and Ricard liked it so much he wrote to us and said could he include uh, Hamam in the campaign now he didn't need to do that he could have just nicked the idea this isn't Samar's Hamam uh, although there's a lot of similarities it's smaller um, strikes me that Tamina may well be Samar's sister is so familiar but it was really nice of him to ask and I think our playtester credit is because we so willingly said Yes, of course. Um, so that's a little peek inside the book. But again, this probably is spoilerful for anybody that's planning on playing the campaign as opposed to running it. So I think that is the end of this unboxing. Thanks very much for watching.